Hey, church family. I just want you to know we had such a great time worshiping together this past Sunday. And I truly appreciate those who made the trip out and those who were watching online. It is such a blessing to be together. And it's amazing when I think about it, that it was December 26 was the last time. And of course, that was a much smaller service because of Christmas the day before. But you know, uh, the sign behind me really captures our heart here. I believe this. It says, when you're here, you're family. And more than anything else, we want to be a family that strives together, helps each other grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus Christ, and reaches the world around us with the gospel of hope. We want to encourage each other, build each other up, and really strengthen each other because the world is getting so much more challenging. And so I just love being together. And I love our worship team and the way they lead. And it was a blessing to hear Joe Caristi recite Revelation chapter 2 from memory. He did the first chapter for us a couple months ago. All of that is inspiring and should really energize us to live our lives for Jesus Christ. The last video announcement I made just two weeks ago, I had indicated that we're going to be talking a little bit more about generosity and sacrificial giving. You know, our financial situation at church has been really difficult, and we've been pressed much more than we have. And yet I looked at Sunday's offering, and it was amazing, and I'm so blessed by that and so grateful to all of you who give faithfully. And we would never want anyone to give out of guilt or because they feel pressured or because all of a sudden there's this critical need and they're fearful that the church would close down or we might have to make some big decisions. We really believe that giving is an act of worship and it comes from the heart. It's led by the Holy Spirit. And so whenever we give to the Lord, we're just joining him in the work that he is doing and building his kingdom at our church and through our church. And so we really want people to give because they just love God and they're grateful to him because of what he did through his son, Jesus Christ. And when I say that it's an act of worship, I think to myself, whenever you give, whether it's online or you put it in the box as you're leaving or you mail it to the church, uh, the worship side is the sense of, Lord, I am just so grateful. I love you so much that I want to be able to be a part of what you're doing. And uh, you have the sense of rejoicing and feeling good because you're, you know you're making a difference through your gift. And in fact, Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. So that's why in an act of worship, it's like your hands are lifted up and you're saying, Lord, this is my opportunity to show you how much I love you. And it's a financial gift. Another way you give is by sacrificing your time and your talents and using them to glorify God as you serve him at church and beyond the church. So I, I just appreciate all that. And I know in an act of worship, it's simply saying, God, thank you for what you've done for me. And what I'm doing for you is small in comparison. You know, I also know it's an act of worship because I think of scripture and I think of the widow who gave. There were people who were drop off their offerings at the temple and they gave large sums of money. And as Jesus observed all this, he saw this widow walk up and give a very little bit. But the sacrifice was different. She gave out of poverty uh, more than what she could afford. And yet they gave out of an abundance far less than what they could have afforded. And so in an act of worship, she was simply expressing to the Lord, there's nothing that's going to hold me back from being able to participate in your work and show you how much I love you. And I think of the church at Macedonia. Paul was raising funds for a special offering to help other churches out. And the Corinthian church, we read this in 2 
Corinthians chapter 8, the first couple verses, the Corinthian church had been first up. They said, listen, we'll participate, we'll give, we'll contribute, and yet they never followed through. And yet the Macedonians, Paul, uh, holds up before them, they gave out of object, abject poverty. They had very little. They were really struggling. Life is hard for them. But they did not want to be told, no, you can't be involved in this. You can't afford it. So they gave out of their poverty and made a difference for those churches that were also suffering. But it was an act of worship. It was from the heart. It, it was showing God just how much uh, they love him. And, you know, it's not how much you give. It's why you give. It's the purpose behind your giving. And we want you to just have that sense of, God, I'm worshiping you. And in the midst of worship, I want to do something for you, knowing all that you have done for me. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, I was at a Willow Creek Community Church for a big conference. And they had churches of various sizes from around the country that were participating in the last church I was in, Omega Church. We were invited to be a part of it. And as I sat there listening, it, we were facing a time in our country where we were in a recession. So this goes back a little bit. And churches were in a crisis point of trying to figure out, do I lay off staff? Do I cut programs? What do I do? Almost like we faced two years ago when we had to be in a lockdown because of the pandemic. And I'll never forget, at the end of the conference, they took pastors of churches of different sizes. They created this panel and they had them share what they were going to do, uh, seeking to offer wisdom. And there was one pastor from Mississippi, a black pastor. He said, you know what? We're not worried at all. We're not laying off staff. We're not stopping the kingdom work because we've taught our people to tithe. And they know that you give to the Lord, whether circumstances are good or whether circumstances are lousy. And, and they know that whether we're facing a crisis or not, our priority is to give to the Lord first. And so that's always stuck with me. And so for me, I just want you to know that when you give to our church, it's really to help the family uh, be strengthened in the word of God, to grow deeper in their relationship with Jesus Christ, and to help reach our world around us, both in Blairstown and in New Jersey and beyond that with the gospel of hope. And you can lift your hands up with us and say, God, we rejoice in you. There's nothing we would want to hold back from you because what you've done for us far exceeds what we could ever do for you. And when we're giving, when we're generous, when we're sacrificial, we simply want you to know how much we love you. Now, not everybody is able to give. You have to understand that. And we understand that. That's why we hold to the principle in Proverbs 3.27, do what is within your power and control to do. And so some are in difficult situations where they don't even have it, uh, the ability to speak into the budget for their home. They don't control the spending. And so the way they give and what's in their power to do is they give of themselves. And that is an act of worship as well. And so do what you can do. And we value and appreciate all of it because as a family, we tough it out together. We, we endure, we persevere, we work together and we trust the Lord. Listen, God is not done with our church and we're facing financial difficulties right now, but we're trusting the Lord that through his people, we will see change come. We love you all. Hope you have a great rest of the week. We look forward to worshiping with you this Sunday.